Kristen's our new IT specialist. Oh, so Steve, quick question. I know we, uh, I was sending you a couple of emails a few weeks ago um, about Wooster Street. And yes. you had made a comment about uh, with 35 mile an hour speed limits that there needs to be some sort of buffer between vehicle Probably. traffic. And if you're, if you're going to do a, late, uh, a bicycle lane, some I, kind of buffer probably is needed. I was in Marion, Ohio last week. And they have uh, a very long, uh, large uh, east-west drag kind of, it's much wider than our Wooster Street, but they have a bicycle lane and it's 35 mile an hour speed limit and there is no... And it's not bar. separated, huh? It is not separated. Now, I, I can't tell you the last time I actually saw a bicycle rider on said bike route, but yeah, it existed. Well, I, wanted to throw that I don't out. think there's any, any rule. It's just sure. that... <laughs> <clears throat> the faster the speed limit, the more you do have to, you know, be concerned about um, uh, riders keeping separate and stuff. So, hey there, Sam. Good to have you with us. Sam. All right, YouTube is live, so I'll keep an eye YouTube on the YouTube is live, so we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is to look at the uh, the dra uh, the meeting notes that. Uh, Andy has uh, drafted us. You should have received uh, uh, copies yesterday in my email, and I will entertain uh, a moment of uh, what's a colleague of mine calls it sustained silent reading, SSR, um, just to, to check it out, and then I will uh, uh, entertain uh, a motion and second to approve. So. I'm done with my silent sustained reading and I move to approve. All right, thank you very much, Eileen. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. And a uh, second from Kristen. And is there a discussion? Any additions, deletions or, uh, or edits? Hearing none, uh, hearing none um, all in favor? wave your little pinky uh, to, to approve. Uh, so they'll be approved as, uh, as written. Okay. Uh, any uh, any op uh, opposed or any abstentions? Okay, uh, so uh, our thank you very much, Andy. I, I do have a, a note in this regard. Andy, Andy's goal is to get me the, uh, the meeting notes earlier and earlier um, so that it's not right before the next meeting. And it's starting to rub off because um, when I got his meeting notes from the last meeting, I created the agenda about two weeks ago. And so all I had to do was make some additions to it. So uh, Andy is a, a, uh, a good influence. That's, that's if I remember to actually add the attachment to said email. I think I did well, that. Oh, yeah, it just takes a couple of times. That's, that I'm, I'm always glad to remind. I have an email where if you say I'm attaching something and you don't have an attachment, it won't let you send it <clears throat> until you override. All right, um, let's go on. Uh, the old continuing business. Uh, just a couple of quick um, updates. Um, um, I think we've talked about this the last two meetings. Um, the Bicycle Safety Commission was the recipient of uh, a community foundation grant to the tune of $1,200 for purchasing um, seven new um, uh, bicycle racks for uh, the downtown area. Uh, and as I've said before, we uh, particularly appreciate um, uh, Christian, uh, Kristen and Ivan's help uh, in submitting the grant and uh, uh, this, I, I'm glad to take credit for a grant like this, but between them and between Amanda doing all the legwork in terms of how much, um, uh, what the budget and everything was, um, 
it was uh, it was really pretty uh, simple. This is, I think, the first time that they actually uh, the community foundation did this all online, and uh, and of course there was something. I guess I I ended up leaving out the budget, so they very kindly a couple of days after the deadline said, um, "We think you're really still interested. Do you have a budget?" So we got it submitted. Um, the B item is in again another grant. Um, on um, March 4th, I guess, I successfully submitted an online uh, grant application and was notified that they'd received it from the Ohio uh, American Academy of Pediatrics for their put a lid on it um, program, which is uh, the lids meaning um, bicycle helmets. Uh, last year, we were recipients of uh, 48 um, children's uh, small and media, I don't know exactly how, there were two different sizes, uh, basically uh, two dozen of each. Um, we were able, despite the pandemic, we were able to distribute oh, about 40% of them, uh, people pick them up at the community center. So um, I'm expecting within the next couple of weeks, I think something like March 28th hearing about whether we've been um, uh, granted uh, more helmets. Um, we, uh, our, our big challenge is to find a place to store them that's not Kristen's office. Um, so uh, other than that, um, we still have, I think most of the helmets that we bought uh, two years ago with our remaining budget. Um, and so, uh, we we need to, we will be planning um, uh, some uh, events. Uh, uh, Sunday when I was out riding, you know, it was such a beautiful day. I went down to Rudolph to the new um, Wood County uh, Park District uh, bike uh, park. It's really pretty. It's only half finished, but it's pretty spectacular. People were coming from all over the place, um, and. Uh, there were several doing these crazy stunts, BMX stuff without helmets on it. Uh, and then I went through City Park on the way home and there wasn't a single helmet in evidence on the skate park. Uh, so I think we have a couple of places we could maybe recruit and say, I think, I think it'll be a hard sell at the skate park. It's just, those are the, the age, age level where that's just uncool. Those are helmets. different kind of helmets too, actually, Steve. Yeah. So. Um, uh, oh, and one, one more thing about the Community Foundation Grant. Andy, if you would make sure this gets in the, just as a reminder, um, one of the, of the stipulations for the, the foundation grant is that we do an evaluation and that we provide some pictures. So we just need to keep in mind um, that we, we want to get out there when um, the, uh, the staff is installing these um, uh, bike racks. Uh, we want to make sure that we get a variety of, of pictures. And then when people use the rack, we also need to get some pictures to verify that they are in fact being used. Uh, what so are we what are you looking for in the evaluation uh, um, process? It, I, I proposed a pre and post. In other okay. words, how many how many people were using the racks before they existed, and how many people? That's easy. There we go. And uh, no, they didn't <laughs> call me on it, so I figure, okay. So before we we basically so just great. need to be able to illustrate that, in fact, uh, they are being uh, used. So that's kind of the evaluation. Uh, I predict there's also going to be a, a big percentage increase. Yes, <laughs> there'll be like an inordinate. Um, we'll find one bicycle laying out someplace downtown and then it'll be whatever times uh, more that we see that we'll just sample that a few times and, and be able to say, yeah, people are using them and your money went to, uh, for a good purpose. Um, all right. Um, item C, uh, we, uh, Kristen and Amanda and I met with uh, Joe Fawcett. Um, from the, the city administration last, yeah, last week. Um, and, and we had a very, um, 
I thought uh, uh, productive uh, uh, conversation and discussion. Uh, one of the things that uh, the Joe was, um, uh, there were several things that he was hoping that the commission would do. Uh, one relative to the, um, you know, our recent efforts with bike infrastructure, the uh, sharrows and bike lanes and things. Um, he, he would like to work uh, closely um, with us in trying to, um, you know, make sure that the plan that they have, they have a map and a, uh, and a paving um, uh, spreadsheet that we know what's, what's happening next. He, um, he wants to make sure that we're, we're working with the, um, the city administration and then we'll be able to put up a, uh, a proposal forward to um, the uh, transportation and safety um, committee from city council before it goes to city council. Um, just so things are, you know, we're not spinning our wheels by, you know, making some crazy uh, recommendation and then the city administration saying, you know, no, we can't do that because, you know, something we don't know. So he was, he was requesting us to, uh, to work closely with us, still following the, the essential procedure of a, um, a proposal that Rachel Phipps had put in about, you know, things germinating up from the Bicycle Safety Commission, working through the Transportation and Safety um, Committee from council and then on to council so that it's an, an orderly process. He also was, is encouraging us to, um, you know, redouble our, our education efforts. Um, and education efforts would include, for example, um, giving away more of the, of the bike lights. I think we still have probably a hundred some of the bike light sets and the helmets and all of the educational materials that, uh, uh, that we have, um, along with, as we'll talk in a little in a moment here about the, uh, a new bike uh, routes and a map to be able to illustrate those. Um, so what uh, what he asked is that we that I bring this up for a discussion item uh, at our meeting tonight and uh, and uh, re requested that um, you delegate uh, Kristen and myself to work with him as we're we're creating um, the uh, plans before we send them forwards. Um, glad to entertain anybody's questions or or thoughts about the process. Um, how, how hard do you think we can push for uh, bike lanes on Wooster Street with this new repaving? Um, I think that's part of, yeah, that's part of what we, we need to be talking with them. Um, you know, part of the problem with bike lanes is they are inordinately more expensive because of the planning and if if um, paving is going on this year, it's very likely that the funding is not um, doesn't exist yet for uh, for that because they they rely on grants and things. But that's I I think I mean it's part of our overall plan, um, and we'll talk about that when we look at the bike routes and stuff. But I I do think we need to um, uh, to keep pushing. We've said. Uh, you know, North and South Main and East and West Worcester are our primary um, streets that are wide enough to uh, uh, accommodate um, uh, bike lanes. And it, it, you know, it makes sense. We already have the separate uh, bike path that goes uh, across I-75 and out to, um, uh, out to Meyer um, that I took last night and that Terrible wind. I thought it was going to blow me backwards, but it was nice not having to. Uh, um, as much as I think it, it isn't really a problem going on a bike through the uh, the roundabouts. It's nice to have your own uh, path that goes out there. It unfortunately at this point is a path to nowhere. It just stops dead at at Dunbridge Road, and then you're thrown out into traffic. But yeah, no, I think we need to do that. Um, we have to realize that within a I don't know, not too long a period of time, uh, they're going to be adding another roundabout at Alumni Drive and Campbell Hill. Um, and so we want to make sure that 
um, you know, we've extended that bike path uh, around and, and past that um, roundabout, preferably back as far as, uh, as uh, Mercer. So I think we need to continue to talk about that. Other how questions? Much, how, much, how much time do you think we have to like maybe make a solid proposal for this? Because, you know, you say that it's, it's more expensive, but, you know, in my mind, you're paying for paint, just, you know, just paying for paint for a well, bike lane that well, on a road that's already being repaved. Yeah, but actually they're not using paint on a new paving. What they're using are these uh, heat applied uh, applications and sure. those are relatively expensive. I, I have no idea whether we, you know, whether there's any possibility or not, but that's something we can raise um, ASAP about it and see if there's a chance to do it now. Okay. Um, um, and it'll, you know, it'll continue because the, um, not just uh, repaving, but the whole reconstruction of, uh, of uh, East Worcester is gonna be happening in the next uh, couple of years, so. Other, other questions about that process? I mean, I, th I think it makes imminent sense to make sure we're kind of on the, uh, on the same page with the administration um, and then work with uh, uh, Bill and Rachel and uh, Jeff on the Transportation and Safety Committee and then uh, they can help move it towards uh, council when we have uh, 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 proposals going forward, so. All right, if and you another, would, I, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna add real quick, Steve. Um, yeah. One idea too that was discussed was possibly coming up with um, two or three options for a particular road or route. So it would be uh, yes. least Thank expensive, you. minimal, meaning like signs, sharrows, that kind of thing, all the way up to bike lane and or separated multi-use path and or a complete overhaul of that street that included all of that so that yes. a single piece of it could be worked out, um, whether it's um, feasible from a safety perspective, from a logistical standpoint, from a financial standpoint, all of those things. And then that right. kind of what would be flushed out by some of the committees, by council and so forth. On right. Okay, here's our options what are we able to actually do so that we're not yeah. just doing nothing at right. least nothing will happen it's just going to be either light medium or heavy yeah so keep that in mind too as you're thinking about yeah thinking through some of these routes that we're going to be asked for not just full blown crazy all out this or that there needs to be right. different options so okay yeah, and we've been thinking more in the in the realm of you know Cheryl's versus bike lanes, and um, uh, and Joe pointed out that you know maybe a third level of um, you know converting completely converting the street to one way, which you know personally the research says that's not a good idea for a variety of reasons. Uh, increases uh, uh, speed and all sorts of things. It also means that bikes can only go one way on that street as well. Um, so, uh, but anyway, I think th that's part of the discussion and uh, he's uh, hoping that um, he'll let Kristen and I kind of do uh, discussions with him and, you know, bring it to you on a kind of a monthly basis uh, to try to uh, look at the, the options. Okay, let's move on to, to D. And uh, you should have a couple of handouts that uh, would have come to you this afternoon. Um, I'm not going to uh, win any um, cartography um, um, awards for my, my map making here because I um, I am not proficient enough to uh, figure out how to actually do it with a computer. So I'm sitting here with my, my little um, uh, pens. Um, but you, there's, three, there's three items 
uh, that I sent relative to um, the bike, the seven bike light, uh, route proposal that um, originated with the, the, our, our subcommittee with Bob and, and uh, Andy and, uh, and Kirby. Um, the, one of the things that Joe mentioned in our discussion last week was, um, you know, part of what he's, he's proposing is that we start uh, with a map that has um, the destinations on it. And so uh, one of the items that I've sent to you is basically um, four different categories of uh, destinations in, in Bowling Green. Uh, schools, parks and recreation, uh, the university, and what I called city businesses. And I, I gave them, you know, schools, their S, and, and we have seven different, uh, or at least I identified seven different schools. Um, I guess there's one more now that I think about it down in Ordway or Erie. Um, but the location of those, um, hopefully a bike route would be going um, to each of those as a destination. Same thing with the parks and recreation, that's called a P. Um, I uh, identified eight different um, parks, city park, winter garden, um, I spelled it wrong, sorry. Um, the Simpson Garden, Simpson Building, uh, the Conneaut Haskins, uh, the Ridge Street Park, Carter Park, the Community Center, it's not really a park, but it's part of recreation. And um, then of course the Slippery Elm Trail I included in that. Uh, because we're going to have connections to it. Then uh, BGSU, I did this sort of haphazardly, um, but the, the university is talking about the, the old campus is called what they're called the traditions buildings, University Hall and um, um, the old quadrangle and things that are is soon to be kind of uh, rejuvenated when they take down the um, uh, administration building later this year. Then um, when you move farther east on campus, the Arts and Humanities campus is the music building, the Wolf Center, the, uh, the arts um, yeah. building. Uh, the science campus then is north on North College. That's uh, biology and physics and psychology. Uh, the athletic campus basically is everything surrounding um, uh, Mercer. So it's the student rec center, the field house, the ice arena, uh, the stadium and all the fields. And then I just roughly said the residence halls south, those are the ones that are along uh, East Worcester and then residence hall north, uh, the ones that are out um, uh, Falcon Heights, I guess they call the, uh, the one, those are relatively new. And then um, I came up with six different categories on, on city and businesses. And again, these are not anything really magic, but identified the Main Street Business District, you know, so-called downtown um, as C1. Uh, the, I included the, uh, uh, the Wood County Library as one, the hospital as one. Um, then Kind of arbitrarily said, okay, businesses out on North Main, all of those businesses north of Poe, um, South Main, all of the businesses south of, of Napoleon, and uh, then the cluster of, of businesses over on, on kind of East Worcester. Um, I know there's some more out on in West on West Worcester. In you know, we could add that if we need to. I think it's covered anyway. And then also suggested the number of buildings across um, I-75 on uh, on Dunbridge and Napoleon and and Gypsy Lane, the, the Wood County Jail, the uh, Juvenile Detention Center, Wood Lane. Uh, there's a municipal court out there. Um, those would be other um, businesses. Um, the so I identified all those and gave them, you know, a letter and a number just somewhat randomly. The uh, next uh, file that I sent you is an actual description. It's color coded. Um, and um, 
and, and they're the same numbers. This is basically the list with some revisions uh, that Andy shared with us last, um, last meeting. Um, there are seven different overall routes. Uh, and what I, what I did is, um, you know, I, I continued using the color code that we had last time. So what, what he called the Northwest BG route uh, is in red. And the destinations that are covered um, by that, that route are S1, which is the high school, middle school, S7, which is the Christian school on, um, um, on Haskins, um, P7, which is the community center, and um, C4, which kind of North Main um, area. And then I, I repeated that with the second um, uh, route is called the high school route. Third is West BG route, Southwest BG route, um, Central BG, which is really the downtown area from as far west as Grove to as far east to, um, uh, to Prospect from basically from Poe Road down to, uh, to Napoleon. And, um, then the BGSU route, um, which tries to connect um, all the major uh, roads that go through or around um, uh, the university. And then finally the east side uh, BG route, uh, which um, in includes uh, the corridor on uh, East Worcester uh, up to Polo Road, follows uh, Dunbridge Road down to Napoleon and Gypsy Lane. And um, probably easier uh, to see this, although the, um, my coloring didn't work really well, but you should have a, a, an Adobe file that has a map on it. Um, the difference between this map and the previous one is that um, I basically tried to connect some of the, uh, of the dots so that it was more obvious of the routes that were um, uh, that were present um, there again, uh, just as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, route one is up here uh, in the northwest corner, then two is down here by city park and the, um, and the high school and uh, three and then four, etc. Uh, five is downtown and then the university six, seven is uh, out on uh, out east. Um, there are a couple of places where there was like a lack of connection. So I made some, for example, we, um, Andy did not propose that we have a route on uh, North College. Um, I just took my own initiative and said, oh, that can be part of the, the east side um, uh, route. I mean, it doesn't fit really well, but it would connect up to Newton Road, which would get you over to the first one. Um, I kind of like how, how it, uh, it flows at this point. Um, what we need to do is um, find, <laughs> I hunted all over the place. This is, is the biggest map I can find. I can't even see all, the, um, all of the streets, uh, much less their names. Fortunately, I had this giant, um, this giant BG map. So every time I couldn't tell what it was, I turned on this one, um, but I, I have a limited uh, copier. So um, I think our next step on this is to uh, bring it to uh, some of the um, uh, folks at, uh, at the city administration and see if the professionals can jazz this up like um, Jason Cisco had done with uh, uh, the writability map and some others. And, and they're already doing it with uh, um, laying out the paving versus our, our destinations. Um, and uh, on this map, uh, if some of you have been able to pull it up, wherever you see a dashed or dotted line, um, that indicates an, an off-road, um, uh, you know, a separate bike path. Um, the, obviously, the uh, down here is the Slippery Elm Trail. Um, and out on East Worcester, uh, the dotted black line is the, the bike path that goes over um, I-75. 
five. Um, I also included the proposed uh, um, uh, bike path from the high school out to the community center and up to Co uh, Coogan's Corners. And north of Coogan, Coogan's Corners, I wanted to make sure that um, we were identifying that that route would connect us to the Hull Prairie route, which is the larger Wood County um, route that would get you up to Perrysburg. So questions. Steve, I got to compliment you as, as in Luddite. I really like how you're using your share screen function. Yes. You're literally just sharing your, your, your screen. I, uh, that, is, that is awesome. It, just you, the way don't I, want, you don't want to see me try to share my screen. Mm -hmm. I have in the past two weeks, I have uh, made a mess of, I don't know how many Zoom meetings. Um, what do you mean it's not up there? I can see it, it's not there. Anyway, I know you can see this even though you can't see anything. But I wasn't, that, um, uh, I wasn't gonna give him permission tonight anyway, so we're all good. Right. So um, discussion about this um, you know, reformulation of, um, well, destinations, routes, um, how to how to go forward? I think you've done a pretty good job, Steve. And I know it's kind of hard to put everything in perspective with all the places, but I think uh, once we get a good map of this here and with places listed on the map and where to go, I think hopefully people can find a way around here. I don't know for somebody new in town, it might take a while, but I think mm -hmm. that is a good step in the right direction. So, and, and I do, you know, to follow up on what Amanda reminded me, um, what, what we want to do is um, as much as possible, really have designations on those streets to kind of follow up. I don't know that we need to use, you know, the um, a, a particular, uh, you know, a different one for each route. I just think, you know, in addition to uh, bicycles may use the whole lane wherever possible that we can uh, install sharrows. Um, the places where, um, you know, given uh, enough head uh, lead time, uh, like South Main, uh, we can get bike lanes on that. The more visible infrastructure that's um, uh, present around town, I think will help, you know, people um, gain some more comfort. And obviously we need to, you know, redouble our education efforts because, uh, you know, those of you that have been on developmental rides that Yay Bikes used to, uh, had offered with us, you really have to, you have to have some kind of scaffolded experience riding out in the lane and, you know, uh, especially on busy roads. And once you've had that experience, it really starts to become um, second nature. So I like um, uh, I like the the idea of you know working in tandem with our um, uh, the infrastructure plus the education. Other thoughts, Steve. I'm technically yeah. not supposed to talk until a lobby visitation. So we'll we'll pretend we didn't hear you. <laughs> so it's no different. Um, uh, uh, there had been discussion, and I'm, I'm keenly interested in uh, the work that you all have done in uh, specifying the different levels of uh, difficulty or expertise involved. Is that I, something that would be overlaid on on the map in some fashion? Well, and and that's a, that's a really good question. Um, the the subcommittee did a nice job of proposing that originally. Then when we you know reduce the, uh, the number down to seven, um, it's sort of, it gets to be a mixture. Um, but I think that's worth our discussion because it certainly would be helpful to, um, particularly for the novice riders that we've talked about for the last couple of years that particularly Neocles was, oh, he, you know, he hammered me every time we talked. Um, about, you know, remember there are people who are afraid to ride on the, you know, the, the people you see riding on the sidewalk, et cetera, are, um, um, 
are afraid to go out on the road. And so we need some more educational. But I think we also need to be able to say, you know, to somehow differentiate um, streets where it's a lot more friendly to um, uh, to ride, particularly for novices. I, I would certainly agree. And that's where we're going to have to put on our creative thinking caps and try to figure out how do we designate those so that it's obvious, not just from a map, because I, I think, uh, you know, certainly my experience over the last 20 years is we've, we've given away literally, I think, thousands of, of this, the old street maps that we had um, that uh, uh, we gave away every, every year. And more than likely, whenever I'd run into a cyclist, they would say, there are bike routes, there are maps. So I don't know where the thousands of maps went, but uh, I, think, I, think we need, I think we need them on the map, but I think we also um, obviously need to represent them somehow on the streets themselves. Maybe, you know, maybe with a color, yellow, um, yellow versus orange, or I mean, green versus yellow versus orange, I don't know. Well, Steve, that was our initial, I think that was my brainchild way back when, but to your point though, is that some of, some of our routes in condensing may have part of the route that's more right. novice friendly and part of it that isn't. Right. And that's okay because the novice may not want to take the whole route. They may just want to get from, uh, you know, my daughter from our, our house on Oakwood court to Simpson. And so right. there's novice ways to get there. Right. So maybe, you know, maybe depending on how um, engineering can put that map together, it could be a right. symbol of some sort, you know, that's just overlaid with a key, you know, right. and whatever that is like a small, small bike or something, you know, or whatever. And this indicates that this would be a good section for a novice rider. And maybe we don't need to distinguish between medium and advanced. What we really right. want to do is just point out if you have somebody, a kid or somebody who hasn't ridden or they're new to the area is just distinguish that novice route as opposed to when you get to between medium and high, I think people should be able to kind of figure that out um, because, you know, the difference maybe is just in terms of traffic and speed. Um, right. They know how to ride at that point. J just a thought. Sure. No, I think so. Uh, other, other comments, Kirby, anything? Kirby's trying to hide in the background. Keep a low profile. No, sorry, I was late. I had a tennis. Not a problem, Kirby. Not at late. all. Okay. You don't want to know how many uh, Zoom meetings I come in late for. So I think I'll just keep my video off for a little while. So I think uh, Kirby and Bob and I were uh, were conscious of uh, maybe not laying out total grades for each route, but something like Kirby and I had brought up uh, together. And then in the last meeting, like splitting Haskins road up, you know, the North of Poe, like we were discussing last month, that is oh, way yeah. heavier of a situation than, you know, South of Poe. So, I that's mean, a, yeah. yeah, that's, that's definitely orange and red. I, I biked yeah. on it the other day and it was like, I, I, I hadn't been on it for a while. Um, I mean, again, I'm mostly intrepid. Um, you know, I have a rear view mirror. I can tell if somebody's coming, but I, you know, I don't like it when they're coming 50 miles an hour and you're not sure whether, you know, if you've got a distracted driver, you're in trouble. But uh, uh, if I, if I can, I may add, I add something in, in that's hopefully germane. If you take, sure. for example, Haskins from Poe to Wren, all right? There is a sidewalk on the west side. And I know that riding on the sidewalk is generally uh, cringe. Uh, you know, people cringe, uh, at least on the this, uh, commission, about riding on the sidewalk. But my understanding is that the biggest uh, drawback of riding on the sidewalk is if you have driveways and people coming out of driveways and not, not seeing a, a bike go right by on the sidewalk. If that indeed is the case, there are no driveways 
crossing that sidewalk. One, I'm sorry, there's one. One driveway crossing the sidewalk between Poe and Wren. Would that, and the sidewalks are, are pretty good shape. They're generally pretty new. So is that is that something that would enter in? Um, and I know a big part of what this commission does is is trade-offs. It's like, well, we want a bike lane, but we got to have a bike lane with with a median. And if it doesn't have a, a median, then it's less safe. But do we do that instead of having no route at all? And, and that's the kind of exercise that you all go through. But on that point, and, and it, by extension, the north side of Worcester from uh, uh, Mercer to the tracks, maybe. There's not many. There's a sidewalk. It's generally pretty wide. Is that a, a, a terrible thing to ride a bike on? As opposed to in the street. I mean, the, on Haskins, like like you said, Steve, it's 50 miles an hour, and it's there's not there's not a whole lot of room on that road. So is the sidewalk something that because of the lack of driveways is you know where the uh, the shopping areas are at the very you know at, at Poe and, and Haskins and then the one the one property that has like a, it's like a farm sort of farmhouse right uh, is that something that would be uh, an acceptable thing I would think that would be <clears throat> actually more amenable to an, a novice again there it's ending at rent you, you, you got a whole different right. ball game north Which of means and that's that's the problem. You really need to be able to develop a path. And and then I want to use the term path. Um, I think what needs to ha would have to we would want to uh, do, and, and others can uh, chime in. But instead of designating it as a sidewalk, designating it as an as an off road bike path, like out on East uh, um, Worcester that we have. So it'd have to be wide, wider, uh, like 10 feet. Um, and it would be um, marked as such, which makes it safer. Um, but the the other issue, and we, this, we've been doing this for the last 10 years or so, talking about that stretch of Haskins. At some point in time, um, you have to switch over to the right side of, uh, of Haskins. Um, because of where the city owns right of ways and whatever. And then the crossover is the, um, as you get farther out towards the community center, that's really the issue. But uh, no, I think your point about the, the, the you know, the fairly wide sidewalk um, along um, East Worcester on the, on the north side, uh, there's no reason we, that couldn't with, you know, we'd have to collaborate with the university uh, there's no reason why that couldn't be designated as a uh, as a bicycle, you know, or a, a multi-use lane. Um, and then, mm -hmm. if people weren't comfortable riding on, uh, you know, on Worcester East Worcester itself, um, they they would have another option. So uh, because it could be, you know, that then in itself, the, the north side is separated very uh, very nicely. There's a you know, uh, a, a nice stretch of grass between the um, uh, the what what's a sidewalk. And again, it probably have to be a little little wider. Probably needs to have a dividing strip. Um, you know, keep people right and left. It's you know, it's not that much different than Slippery Elm Trail that is a multi-use path for bicycles, uh, rollerblades, um, uh, runners. Uh, there's all sorts of people. So. Um, sure, that's a that's a possibility. The you know the the real solution to uh, getting out to the community center is going to have to be a, a you know a multi-use path from from the high school and and out across Dutton. I think um, that uh, that'll be the easiest uh, way to do it. However, if that you know up through Wren because one of the things we have not done I was conscious of that and doing the map today we haven't put in it, put any uh, bike routes um, through the birds um, I don't know that we really need them through there because it's a pretty friendly you know it's a bicycle friendly place to uh, to go but if you if you at least had the uh, path as far as Wren 
uh, then at least people could get you know, into the birds, um, you'd have a, a partial multi-use path. But I think that's in line with what, um, um, uh, what Joe was uh, suggesting that we need to, you know, examine different options, uh, not just on-street sharrows, not just uh, on-street bike lanes, but, you know, multi-use paths, I think are all uh, things that we need to explore. Other, other thought. Thanks, Bill, for that. Andy, um, Steve, yeah, you made uh, a point about uh, what making. I don't. know, You said something about you know making people more comfortable uh, on bicycles or more cars. I think that should be an ultimate goal of this commission is to make cars more comfortable with bicycles on the street, but bicycles more comfortable with cars on the street. Mm -hmm. That we should be sharing them. And to Councilman Harold's point about you know, the lack of driveways on that portion of Haskins or on Wooster, there are still, you know, the, and not to insult other people's driving, but how many people stop before the stop sign, before the sidewalk, look left and right, then pull past, then look for traffic. Like people can still coming out of Wren be looking left, not see anyone on a sidewalk. Right. Coming the other way. And, you know, that's when you get someone going over a car uh, the same thing for Wooster Street. I mean, no offense to college drivers, but I've seen a lot of people, you know, screaming out of there, not even bothering to stop, so on and so forth. And yes, but, there are. No yeah, the, and that's why I think what would be important is to um, designate that, that, you know, that, that section on Haskins, the, the north side of East Worcester are not sidewalks but in fact they're multi-use paths sure yeah and if that's the case and and i like you know east worcester there are only um once you get from founders you've got south college uh then you have the the one parking lot right by the library uh the the street past the uh the greeks um it there are fairly long stretches. So compared to a regular sidewalk in a neighborhood, um, there really are not that many, um, uh, you know, intersections that would, uh, uh, would cause a problem. But I think that's, that strikes me as one of the options that we could explore is to, um, you know, try to create some more of these multi-use paths out of existing, um, you know, sidewalks uh, or right-of-ways that we already have. Yeah, um, leaving them as sidewalks just doesn't seem like a, like leaving them marked as sidewalks doesn't seem as a good idea for us to say, uh, you should ride on these sidewalks, but not on these ones. And just- well, That's why I think, yeah. I think we don't call them sidewalks. Yeah. We call them multi-use paths. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, literally you make them, um, you put signage on them, you make them 10 feet wide, you put a, a stripe down the middle to, or a dotted stripe that keeps, uh, you know, you designate them as a, as a path. Um, uh, yeah, rather than having a list, well, you're not allowed to do, you know, ride here. Um, we have determined, you know, that it's, it's too dangerous to pedestrians to ride on sidewalks in the downtown area. Um, you certainly are permitted to do it, but as, as Tyson reminds us, about 90% of all the bicycle accidents uh, happen when the bicycle is on a sidewalk where they're not expecting a car or a car is not expecting them or something. Um, um, we know I'll, add real, I'll add real quick. I don't think that would be all that difficult of a, of a possibility because I've been in conversations with past city engineers who have referred to that particular sidewalk out from the bird streets leading in to town on Haskins and also that path coming across on um, Wooster by the university. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, at least as like a temporary solution, the idea was for, um, you know, you have that multi-use path and that's a part of that roundabout project. Well, then bikes could then connect at the Stro Center onto that sidewalk, um, which is my understanding, both of those are a bit wider than your traditional sidewalk. They are, yep. And I would have to look and see what the actual width 
designation is for like a multi-use path. But I don't think it would be all that difficult. Yeah. Something in my in my mind, ten feet pops out, but I'm not positive that's correct. But it's in the it's in the uh, okay um, the specifications. We can find that out fairly easily. Yeah, and this was past engineers. I know the Bird Street sidewalk that was always Cisco that referenced that as you know that's a bigger sidewalk. They can ride their bikes on there until they get closer to town. Yeah, White Haskins, and then Mike Trinity, the engineer after him. Made the comments regarding the sidewalk near the university. Now, sure. of course, we have a different engineer. So we would want. <laughs> we would right. want to. We have to keep educating our engineers. I yeah. Guess. So we would want to look into that a bit more, but I don't think it would be all that much of a challenge based on those two folks making the yeah. in the past. So. I, I think that's a a reasonable, um, you know, kind of sort of compromise. Yeah. I mean, but I do agree with Kirby's comment and that we don't want to be out educating the community that sidewalks are not the safest place to be and right. then telling them to go ride on what looks very much like a sidewalk. Yeah. So that's a really good point to keep. Any yeah. any last comments before we move on to another item? That was an excellent point, Kirby. That's why you need to remain on as the high school rep. Absolutely. You can tell me at the end, Joe Fawcett think, just needs to know. So yep. Um, city, uh, I guess it's a uh, city council's job to make things more complicated. So here's a little complication. Um, right now we have uh, an ordinance where you have to clear your sidewalk um, if you have snow on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is no ordinance for clearing a multi-use path. So the moment something is changed from a sidewalk to a multi-use path, the person is no longer obligated to clear it of snow. City responsibility then. Well, in in, in the case of East Worcester, the university takes care of yeah, that. Yeah, it shouldn't so, be a problem with the university. Yeah. Um, no, that would, the responsibility would, I mean, part of the reason to choose that section along uh, Haskins to Wren is in fact that, uh, as you pointed out, there are not the number of there's just the one driveway coming out of the um, the little uh, strip mall there. Um, it it is reasonably safe if it can be made a little bit wider, designated, etc. Um, and yeah, and then uh, then the city or someone has to take responsibility for it. Um, well, as someone that lived on Wren Road before those sidewalks were there and raising kids, it's a appreciably better because the yes. only way out of the bird streets was Wren. That's right. You had to go down Haskins, which had no sidewalk. With, yeah. Uh, two that boys that were pretty uh, hairy. Teen, so it's a wonder you survived to grow up. Yeah. Um, um, I'd like to jump, uh, jump over if you, with your permission, the E and F. We've talked about these before, but uh, I don't think we have anything else to contribute tonight. Uh, but I'd like to look at, at item G which is about the uh, discussion for uh, a, bike, a bicyclist survey. Um, uh, Kristen, can you share anything more uh, with your discussions with, uh, uh, or maybe Amanda or uh, Kristen with Dr. Orr um, about a student to do the survey? Um, I don't think I have anything more than that last email, Steve, uh, which was just that, yeah, they would be able to do that um, probably in the summer. We could have a, a student or two. Honestly, I think one student would be plenty for that right. scope of a project. Cool. And I, and I do think that's, that's something that, you know, thinking back to the comment uh, earlier to Andy about evaluation, that's something we haven't done very much of. And it would be useful to um, uh, to have a survey available uh, to get feedback about you know um, we've been in we've had some like um, meetings of people you know the people that are rabidly in favor or against it show up but to be able to get a broader perspective of um, of people who may or may not uh, cycle in the community would be useful for the survey so. Um, I, we will uh, keep that on our uh, on our list for um, uh, paying attention as we get closer to the summer. Um, 
Uh, Tyson, anything uh, in the realm of uh, pedestrian bicycle incidents or accidents? Nope, nothing that I saw. Good. That's <laughs> no news is really good news in that regard. Um, all right. Uh, anything else uh, on old and continuing business? Um, I had something. Wait. <laughs> That's why I was looking at you because I, 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 I am, I am, I am focused here, but I'm getting text alerts about what's going on at the school board meeting, which is blowing my mind. Oh no. That's, I'm just going to say blowing my mind. I might have to go there next, but anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Kirby, are you willing to stay on? Can I let Joe Fawcett know? Okay, perfect. Yeah. He said he emailed and I'm like, you know what? We have a meeting. It's easier just to ask him in person. So I'll let him know. Um, Cause the terms go through May. I think we start a new term in June and the students are, are one year. So, and we did talk about um, getting with BGSU uh, to start, okay. maybe have somebody start in the fall. It was just such a weird year with some students not coming and being some virtual and whatnot. So um so we, we do have that in our sites to get a, a BGSU rep on. So uh, Amanda, um, did you have a chance to ask uh, Nick Hennessy? I did not, Steve. I'm sorry. Okay. We, yeah, we were in the final mode of that report and it was pretty focused. So well, I, and I, I saw him on Saturday at the at the electronics extravaganza giveaway. Um, and after I drove away, I go, crap, I forgot to ask him. Um, yeah. But I'm sure he, was, he had he had quite a nice group of, of students who uh, were doing the sustainability stuff. So um, my garage looks still crowded, but a lot better than it did before Saturday. We got rid of a lot of uh, okay. old electronics. I'll try to um, I'll send myself a note, Steve. I might be able okay. To That's fine. Check him down. He's he owes me a couple of things, so maybe. <laughs> good. Um, for that report. So I think we can, we'll probably be touching base, I guess. All right, good. The week, so. um, under, under new business, um, the, um, we have the May bike month coming up, which will probably be fairly restrained. Um, Amanda and I've heard from, um, uh, from Keith Webb, they are again planning a, what they call a virtual ride of silence. Um, and we will be getting more information. I saw Keith last night, but I haven't, uh, we didn't talk about the virtual one, uh, but he will be sending more uh, about that. Um, so it will be vastly different than having to, you know, um, get crowd, uh, traffic control and everything else for this year. Uh, but we do have two other, and, and we also last month said, you know, we're not even talking to the schools about the third grader uh, assembly kind of thing that we've done. Um, but we do have the bike spokesperson. Um, we did not have a candidate in 2020. Um, and so my question about that is, should we look for a retroactive 2020 as well as a 2021 um, person to designate? Uh, I'm wondering what people's feelings are. I say it's the asterisk year. Okay. <laughs> that it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I won a, a, what was called a fellowship for my, uh, my undergraduate alma mater. And it was scheduled for a presentation in April, which of course didn't happen last year. And I'm still waiting to find out whether, uh, can I, I want to know if I can put this on my Vita for being the, uh, the winner of the, um, the award two years in a row, just because I haven't done the presentation yet. Um, okay, so um, Kristen, can we get um, uh, an updated, you know, one that says 2021 on it? And we'll, um, uh, yep. I think we've been using May 1st as the um, kind of as our deadline so that at uh, the either the first or the second uh, council meeting, we can uh, uh, present the um, the award for the bike spokesperson for the year. 
Yeah, I'll get that updated and send it out to everybody and I can get a press release out and all that. Okay, good. So, um, and following up that, that um, uh, we also, uh, the same week that the, you know, the right of silence is typically on that, uh, I think it's either second or third Wednesday, that, that same Friday of that week is usually the bike to school or work day. Um, I don't know what we can, um, what we can do in that respect. Um, we just don't know what things are going to be like, but at least I wanted to toss that out and we can, we can uh, discuss it further next month uh, if we want to uh, do some sort of a promotion. Any, uh, any thoughts of yay, we should, or no, we shouldn't? Well, it depends on what day it is for the schools because apparently now they're not going back. They're not, oh my goodness. That's why you're freaking out, oh Lord. Okay, They Never just mind. rescinded their votes from last Tuesday. Because that's- What? Okay. Yeah, when this is done, tune into the school board meeting. Apparently yeah. it's entertaining. Uh, uh, Sam, and, Sam and Kirby, you're still on vacation. Wait, wait. Do you know, do you know what's going on with like sports then? Because part of, the, part of the thing was sports were gonna go five days a week too. Oh, sports well, I thought sports five were days five days a week already. Oh, yeah, boy. I think it's just oh. a change. I think it should all just stay hybrid. Darn, I've been doing quite a lot of work uh, organizing protests against that, and now I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I did it for you, Kirby. The, the, the meeting's not over yet, Kirby, so, you know, just saying. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm all right, let me just finish up right now. with two more, uh, two more items. Um, you are recipients of, um, uh, or the benefactors of my um, inability to sleep last night. So I got up from from uh, twelve thirty to two thirty and wrote a uh, an educational article. Um, that's it's a little over three pages, and it comes complete with a a quiz. Um, and uh, I uh, it's what you have is simply the first draft. Uh, I'm a notorious rewriter and rewriter and rewriter, but it actually wrote very quickly. I guess I should uh, have insomnia more often. Um, I'd like you to take a, a look at it. The title is was um, uh, stimulated by talking with uh, uh, with Keith Webb last night, who's a representative from We Are Traffic, and that's why I called it Bicyclists. You we, you are traffic. Um, and would like you to uh, uh, take a look at it. Also, I would be glad to have um, some voluntary writing pe uh, pairs uh, to explore some other topics. And I had, you know, um, the, the gist of this article probably covers item number one, why don't you ride against traffic? Um, that's, that's where it uh, starts from. Um, I did not, I did a little bit talks about perils of riding on the sidewalk. Um, I think we could really use uh, something about the benefits of uh, wearing a helmet and work into that the fact that we have helmets to, uh, to distribute. Uh, is anybody interested in being a, a riding pair um, with anybody else? No, Kirby? I have quite a lot of other you things probably to write. Turn that into uh you know a term paper or something <laughs> oh. <laughs> well if anybody has ideas you, and and i'm just suggesting writing pairs but uh, if somebody has an interest in um a topic um first of all if you if you have an a, a topic that you think would be very valuable as an educational um um kind of article to post in local media and on the city newsletter, um, let me know of the, of the idea. Um, it won't commit you to have to be the author of it, um, maybe. Uh, but uh, will uh, any other kinds of things that would be useful, I think would be, uh, would be helpful. And uh, uh, Bob, I know, has, you know, such an extensive um, 
uh, background in uh, in education. I'm sure he has ideas coming all over. I also know he's heading to Arizona to go biking. I'm jealous. That's why I'm wearing my green shirt. I'm green with jealousy. I could I could write a report. I'm going to check out the bike pass. I'm going to be on this 10 day 500 bike cycle trip across northern Arizona. Cool. And we'll be going to Flagstaff and I'll. I'll be biking on Route 66, so I don't know what that's going to be like or not. And I have to bike on the interstate for 10 miles also. Oh, wow. You're allowed to out there. Yeah. In Colorado, I've seen it as well. But they usually have a concrete barrier or something on I-70. Um, anyway, um, so I, I do think that this is part of our educational thing, if we can get information out in front of the public. So two requests would be... Um, give me feedback on the, um, the article that I shared with you. Uh, and a second would be, if you've got other ideas for articles, we'll see if we can't twist some people's ideas of, uh, or twist their arms to, uh, to author them. Uh, and then the final thing um, is the, the Walk Bike Ohio program. Uh, they are still um, uh, accepting um, feedback uh, online, and I've shared with you two um, uh, two links uh, to the Walk Bike Ohio program uh, about the why, the mission of it, and then also the uh, real interesting looking fact sheet that I encourage you to take a look at. And so click on that. Uh, other new business for the good of the order. Uh, this is not really business, but um, it's all right. Just a recommendation. You guys should watch uh, the YouTube channel, uh, Not Just Bikes. Uh, it's a guy from, well, from Canada in the Netherlands explaining all about really interesting infrastructure that they have. And uh, <laughs> like, I wasn't in the city planning before, but it's, it's they're interesting videos and so it's called not just bikes yeah good and okay yeah we'll look that up on youtube thank you kirby okay. that's that's new business good suggestion um any anything else uh we can quickly go to lobby visitation anything else from you bill no i was sure you had this long list for us all right, um, hearing, hearing no additional um, uh, cries for, let's stay on longer, uh, we can uh, adjourn and uh, I'll wait. I'll give you five days before I send you a tickler, Andy, and we'll, we'll get the agenda for next month and get your, uh, your meeting notes up. Thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, Steve, we'll miss the April meeting. I will ask uh, yes, them. and uh, I know, uh, Rob, Bob oh. will. But we'll be thinking of you, but we're okay. going to be really jealous. <laughs> well, my wife's coming out at the last five days. We're going to do some hiking up in Grand Canyon and Sedona. So she's going to check up on me, see how I'm doing there. So hopefully I survived the bicycle trip. So we'll see. Okay, good. All righty. Thanks. So <laughs> thanks, yeah. everybody. Okay. And, uh, thanks for joining us. So what was this about them? So they rescinded their vote. So they're going to vote again, right? That's, or I, 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 that's all I know. You better get okay. over to the high school or where are they having the meeting? It's uh, the live streamed on YouTube. In the Performing Arts Center. They uh, can you have better get to, over there and find out what's going they on. They can have up to 151 people. There's apparently about 80 people in person. So Hey, you got time. Um, get on your I, bike, I, I'm, I'm not Go going. get them. I'm not going. Nope. Nope, not happening. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining. See ya.